what's up guys it's b5 for real and i'm obviously going to say make sure you drop a like and subscribe but um uh i appreciate if everybody does it because um i take time to these videos and it's my first tutorial for me i'm just gonna try to cover everything in depth and we will go uh we'll start and the thing is you might be like oh you're only emerald uh i'm not only i only peak diamond but the thing is um a lot of times, I think I'm probably like one of the best people to cover this topic because a lot of times you'll, you'll go and look at some videos and you'll either be like, oh man, it's a bunch of champs or it's, oh, they play PC or they play console and it's like the opposite, you know, thing. So sometimes they have different scenarios and some different things work. Um, but most of the time it is the same and they are right. But a lot of times what I try to see people do is they will try to copy higher rank strategies. And although it's good, sometimes they might not know why you're supposed to do it. And they also might not fully have the mechanic on that causes them to do things that gets them killed or not. So I'm going to show you, I'm not, not only am I going to show you um, some things to play the game better, I'm going to... Uh, show you what some things you can do to work up to it. I'm going to show you things that I did Versus you just trying to change things like that. Another thing I want to say is I'm not necessarily a professional at this So if you have any other tips that you might want to give just Put them down in the comments and help out. I'm also going to link a couple other videos uh, If this wasn't the best because I'm not really the best at describing stuff So if you want to learn some more things in depth i'm gonna post a uh, i'm gonna link a couple more videos in the description make sure to check that out and the main goal of this isn't for clout it's not to look like i'm good i just want to help people get better get off to is settings so if you guys have noticed in this first little bit you guys notice that my settings aren't the same see like this it's much more slower than this so, uh, first things first, what you want to do is you're going to want to hop in, and one of the main settings that you might want to change is your drone after prep manual. So, uh, I, uh, I used to have it on semi, but a lot of people still have an automatic. So things like this, what this does is like, for example, when you're droning, let's say you're droning in the prep phase, right? Because you should be droning, droning is super important. Um, pretty much what it does is when you have it on automatic, it kicks you off your tool right um you'll be droning blah, blah blah the second the timer ends it kicks you off when you have it on manual um pretty much what that essentially does is it allows you to stay on like the drone or your drone whatever like you're looking on so like let's say you have a teammate i don't know for whatever reason doing in a, in a martyr rush for example and he asks you to hold this camera and make sure no one's there maybe it kicks you off and to go there so maybe there's somebody in that little bit that you're off your drone, maybe you didn't see somebody move, and they're out of frame, and you don't know the call out is or something. Like, let's say this is your camera, right? So let's say, you're, uh, let's just say this is your drone. I'm on, def I'm on defense, let's just say this is your drone. Let's say you see them here, right? If it kicks you off, they can move here, and you're not gonna know where he's going to Amaru in from. Let's say, well, I guess you wouldn't be Amaru in this scenario, he'd be going through the store. But you wouldn't know where he's at now because you got kicked off in that second. Because in about, look, look at the timer. In the span of, look how far I made it in one second. That's how far you can make it in one second. So you're off the drone, you're gone. He get, he's out of your sight. So now, from this POV, you don't know if you move back here. You don't know if you move back here. And it's going to help, it's going to stop your guys' push. Another thing what I suggest doing is coming over to your HUD, making sure that you're always on um, 90 FOV, you're not HUD, you're just playing with that. And that's what, uh, it's really it's going to help, because I see a lot of people like posting clips, and they'll be on the base of 60 like this. Like there is, this is 60, and even though it's the same thing, look how, like stuff just feels, and looks a little slower, like look how, look how much slower it makes you look like you're on. In reality, you're running the same. Uh, you're in the same speed, but I don't know. It's just something I like to look, and it, you can open to your screen. You can see a little more. Your audio. I always see people arguing, arguing with these. Okay, 
I feel like that you should almost never have it on TV. Now, uh, you'll be like, why is that on high fi and night mode? These, a lot of times, depend on your headset. Like, I see people arguing. Like, I used to use night mode. Um, for my last headset, when I got my new headset, I realized that this wasn't as loud, so I moved it around, and hi-fi actually made it higher. So I just moved these around, because it really depends on what your headset is. Um, you know, for the most part, um, it's probably going to be the same, but um, you might want to move around, because sometimes if you buy different headsets, I know some people be playing with like AirPods or some weird stuff, it can definitely affect how you hear stuff. Like, you'll still hear it the same, but something just will be, like, quieter. Um, another thing is your controls. You should almost have your vibration disabled that kind of messes with you. Um, if you're on PS5, you should have your trigger, uh, your trigger effect disabled. For those of you who don't know what a trigger effect is, it's like real life, so it makes it feel like you're shooting a real gun, like you're pulling a trigger on a real gun. Um, these are my settings if you want to copy them down, Gadget Deployment Advance, I can go over these. Um, pretty much, whenever you do your gadget, uh, it gives you a chance to cancel the action. Um, drone Deployment, so what this does is, when you throw a drone, when you have it on standard, it puts you on the drone immediately. But when you have it on advanced, you can, that's how people need to invade. Like, they'll throw the drone, it doesn't matter. But when you throw your, but when you have it on automatic, you throw it, and then it immediately puts you on like this. Another thing, oh, uh, leaning behavior on console, this is just how you lean like this. So in order to do so, you have to aim in and then unaim like this. Versus on PC, how they can just kind of go back and forth. Um, yeah. So, you have to aim in. But a quick way to fix it, you just hit L2 and then quickly switch it like that. So it doesn't affect you too much. Just some quick switches. Um... These are just weird things. I, I play in classic. I know some. I know some people are updated. I don't know. I just like classic better. Um, again, some 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 things are just gonna be preference based. Um, because I know, cause I know, I know, I know for a fact there's gonna be some people in comments saying things like, "Oh, you should play updated. Oh, you should play classic." Blah blah blah. blah. It's really preference based because I have friends who are in champ who play updated. I have friends who are in champ who play classic. It's really opinion based because. If you're going to learn stuff, you can do it either way. It's not the end of the world if you play updated or classic. Um, same thing with sense. It's opinion based, but what I recommend is um, have your so, uh, so for example, this is my horizontal. This is my left to right. It's 75. This is my vertical. It's it's up and down. I like I would suggest have your vertical like lower. Like so depending on what sense you might want it, one half. Like this is a third. My vertical is a third of what my horizontal is, but I'd, I'd, I'd have it be anywhere from like a third to half. Um, because what this does is it ends up making it so um, you don't overlook things. Because like a lot of times I'll see people go to 100, 100, and they'll end up doing stuff. And like let's say there's a guy right here, and that for whatever reason like they're looking down here, they'll go to swim up here. I feel like having a lower vertical helps you not over um over swing the guy or over um look because like sometimes like let's say there's a guy like right here oh, there's literally a guy right here so instead of swinging right here sometimes you have two sensors like the end up here over here up here versus when you have your sense you're just right here you can do a quick swing or like with flicks sometimes like a lot of times this is how people over flick things or under flick things and yeah another tip I can give you is I would say stay with your settings okay you can get your settings off a YouTube video uh, I'm gonna go through the rest of my settings and copy mine down but uh, I've had these settings for about two years and it, um, it helps you become more accurate okay um these are my ADS what I would do is I, I would make sure to almost always have this on advanced because the difference in these is a lot and you might want to adjust them, see how it works for each gun, go into like a training, mess around see who feels right. Um, unless you have stick drift, I like that my uh, you, my dead zone's around 8. These are also a thing, pretty much if you don't know what a dead zone is, 
let's say you have a circle, right? Let's say you have a circle, right? And this is your thumbstick in the middle. What that essentially does is this is your this is your thumbstick, and your dead zone depends how far you have to turn your thumbstick before it does that action. Like for example, if I push my thumbstick this much, that bat might be lower. But if I put it on 50, I would have to push my thumbstick like almost all the way over here um, before it even starts turning me. So unless you have stick grip, I would have it try to be lower. You can even have it lower than 8. I just always had on 8. It hasn't really affected me too much. That's what I'm used to. And uh, I'm going to go through my settings really quick. If you want to copy these down, you can just pause the video. Another thing I might want to say is I don't know, mini music down. I don't I don't like the mini music. It's just super loud. Like it's cool but it's loud. And a lot of times I see people running things like white or black what uh of these or like some other color. I if I were you, I would try to run some uh pretty much some sort of like like bright color. Maybe like your default one. Uh, blue, green, probably like orange and red, pink or purple, because a lot of these ones in like darker corners, they it really just um you can't I don't know like uh, you can always turn your brightness up, but even sometimes in darker corners, sometimes it can be hard to tell your crosshair, especially if you're using like magnified edge. Also, scopes are another opinion. Um, I would probably say use either magnified A, B, hollow, or like whatever, depending on the gun. I'm, I just would never touch magnified C. That's just my personal preference, but I know a couple of champs who use it, and it's probably not the best, in my opinion, but it can be good. Same thing with laser sights. Laser sights are very optional, because if you're a sight sitting character, like, let's say you're going to be sitting in sight and you're going to be holding an angle, you might not want the laser sight on, versus like if you're going to roam, so you have quicker ADS. Because I've seen a lot of people, they'll run the laser sight for the quicker ADS, but then they'll be sitting in a corner like this, aiming at that wall. Like, it doesn't help your ADS if you're, that doesn't help your ADS so much if you're already aiming down. It's more like when you're, like, trying to aim down like this. So if you're already in a corner aimed, it's not really very helpful and it just shows them where you're at. So if you're going to run a laser sight and you're going to hold an angle like this, normally, just aim, like, slightly over here. And, like I said, your sensitivity is going to come to work to help with those flicks. I'm going to talk about is is um crosshair placement because a lot of times people don't know how to posi uh, position the crosshair. So for the basics, your head your head positioning, their head positioning is gonna be somewhere in between like this area right here. So to be safe, you get like if you put uh, if you barricade a door, it's going to be like around here. If you aim a little higher, like here or here, you're just gonna be aiming at shack. Um, that's why some people might climb you. Cause like if you literally just look straight, for example, and you walk straight, it lines up here. So in this mode, we have our targets. See that we're aiming here, and we're right on this man. We're aiming at the higher, like the higher notch is right here. This is when you, this is when you're going to go. So right about in here is the sweet spot, cause even if you aim at the point of the it's not too bad. So you can just drop him around. Uh, and another thing is, if you're aiming here, uh, in head level, you can tell you're still doing the person's head. If you're aiming head level, you're doing the person's head level, you have to do. So, for a lot of these gameplays, if you're at least aiming head level, um, and maybe you don't have the fastest flicks, something that could help you is just crouching. Like, that's not a good tip that can result in headshots, because I know a lot of people aim lower. But um, I would say the first thing, if you're like when you're getting used to your sensitivity or whatever, make sure um, if you're not the best at flicks, to aim down. All right, aim down. Try try your flicks. If that's not working, then you can always just crouch and it'll be on the head. And eventually, when you keep just practicing, like always, always try to be aiming at head level. If you're if you're crouched, aim uh, aim higher. Like if you're holding an angle. And the thing is, like for example, if you're sitting in like a corner like this. Uh, you don't want to be aiming here because they could see you from here. You don't want to aim here because if they swing you, they're going to be over here. 
You want to be like somewhere in between, because like if they quick peek you, right, you're gonna want to be kind of like somewhere like in the middle, not like too far in the middle. But for example, if they quick peek you, they're not gonna extend all the eye hair. You're gonna be right here, and you're gonna try to shoot your head, and they're probably gonna try to quick peek, quick peek you and uh, kill you. But you also have a slow. Um, a lot of people are not a lot of people are able to just pop them the second they see them. Um, it, it's really reaction based. Maybe there's some apps on your phone that uh, you can do. Or like for example, it's like a re it's like a red screen, and then when it flashes green, you're supposed to touch it. That can help you the reaction time. Um, another thing is like when people are swinging. If you're right here, and let's say you're you're um you're sensitive, you might you're a slower you know sensitivity type person, or whatever, and you're, or maybe you're not used to sensitivity. You might trail the person. All right, you might trail the person if you're aiming right here because they're gonna be moving like this, and in return. You might not necessarily be on the main trailer person versus like if I'm right here and then when I first react to it and I'm moving, I'm moving with the person. A lot of times I see people like stuff like that or people aiming at the floor. Just try to aim head angle for the most part. I mean, if you're crouched, it's okay to aim crouch level. It's all right sometimes, but if you know that they're standing, which they probably are, um, I'd aim head level. And a lot of time, another thing is please do not full sprint. Um, full sprinting is bad, okay? like. If there's a blue channel right here, you see that bot? These bots, they're shooting. Like you can tell, like, this is like this little bit of run that you're doing. Um, a lot of times you're gonna have a big shot for it. Next thing that I want to kind of go off is quick peeks. Um, I see a lot of beginners try to mess these up, so I'm gonna teach you two easy uh, ways to quick peek. Um, the first one is probably the worst version. Um, but it's just to get you kind of going. So whatever way you are, um, you're only gonna want to use one stick. So let's say I'm walking right, you're only gonna want to use your right stick. Now you're obviously gonna have to use your left to move. But what I mean by that is when you're walking out, right? What you're gonna want to do is you're gonna R. Uh, I'm, you're gonna want to your right stick or whatever your right uh, lean button is for the zone players. And um, if you're zen, you should just throw out the window. Anyway, um, if you want to hit your stick, it's going to re um, make you centered, and you want to hit it again. So, when you're going something like that, it's going to look something like this. I messed it up. I haven't done this one in a while. It, it's slow, so you kind of have to prefire it a little bit because you don't want to be right here and do it because that's going to have your body out more. So, you, you want to prefire the corner a little bit. So, like when I'm trying to get like right here, that's probably where I'm going to do my first little. And it's, it's, it's better than doing no quick peek. It's not the best quick peek, and I know people are going to clown it, but it's better. The other one is more advanced, so I'd say if you're on like silver or higher, maybe start trying to work on this one, um, because it can take a while to get good at. Um, this is the more advanced one. So if you're in the range of like silver to like gold, maybe plat, I'd probably work on this one. So it is, it's pretty much the same thing, but when you walk this way, you want to aim the other way and then back so it kind of is like something like that and then this also allows you to shoot your gun while you're doing it that's how people be getting shots off so if you're wondering how you, how you would shoot uh, a lot of times people think like you have to aim and uh, like move and shoot mid time but that's not really the best way to do it if you want the most accurate way to do it, it you're, it's going to be a fast motion it might not always seem like it but it's going to be a shoot left to right and if you're going and if you're going if you're walking left it's going to be a shoot right left and so you want to reverse it so for example for this week quick peek you want to do it this way you want to go left to right left to right left to right left to right same thing with this one right 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 but when you're walking this one it's going to be more of like a left 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 motion or a right left right left and it, it would be the same, it'd be a shoot right left if you're trying to quick peek on this side. So like doing this quick peek, it's how people be getting shots off. And yeah, I'm just not the best because I'm trying to show people. I have some sort of like curse whenever I be trying to show people stuff, I play bad, but yeah. Uh, and a lot of times people will be doing it like, th this is me doing it, right? Um, sometimes you can do it too fast, and I see people be doing it too slow, and they'd be messing up like this. It's like, uh, the best thing I can say is like, if you have extra time in prep phase, let's say you, for, you have site all done, 
or you're a roamer and you don't have your team site, uh, help set up site. At least try to help yourself by practicing a little bit. Like if you're just walking down a corner, maybe try to do, uh, maybe try to practice a quick peek or something. Uh, Pre-firing, you can practice your gun recoil in the prep phase, but a lot of times you might run out of ammo. But yeah, it's pretty much the same either way. Um, that's all I like, do beating shots off. So. Uh, it's gonna take practice. Oh, I keep hitting that door frame. Like that. But, um, yeah. So, we're gonna move on to the next topic. It'll be one of the most very important things, and it's positioning. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm gonna show you a clip of me using a similar scenario. So, I'm in a ranked game, and my entire team dies. So the first thing I do is I notice there is a guy in laundry room and there's a guy outside in blue bunkers. The third guy is unaware, but right here I end up finding him. I don't know why he didn't shoot me. Uh, then I end up working my way. So this guy swings me and I run out of ammo, so I rotate back and I notice and I hear that he's not uh, flanking from my left. So I'm holding the double. That's that's the only way that he can come from because I can hear the left side. So when I don't hear him coming, I try to get a C4 to stop him, but I end up not hitting him. Uh, he then end up ends up throwing a Ayana clone, and I silent walk towards here. He, uh, I don't want to waste much ammo, so I punch it out, and I notice somewhere over there. So I aim through that little hole, and I end up hitting him. Um, so yeah, some things like this, it's uh, it's gonna be very situational. Maybe that Brav is not there. She's maybe over by the Ayana or something, and it's really situational. But this is gonna help. So listen. So positioning is essentially where you can position yourself. Uh, for you to be at the best in the best situation now there's a lot of times where positioning it's just not going to help you and there's going to be some times where you might not know what to do because I'm going to try to give you a feel for things that you should do but I uh, but what I'm trying to um, do is just help you figure it out because it's not going to be the same scenario. You're going to play against people that have different strats. Now, when you get higher, some of the strats might be, when you get higher ranks, some of the strats might be more similar, um, but some, they're going to do it differently. Maybe they might bring a Chachanka. Maybe they might bring a Mute. Maybe they might bring a, I don't know, Oryx, Lishan, something on Lucy. So things are going to be different. It's not going to be cookie cut. It's not going to be the same. Sometimes the lower ranks might bring Lower ranks are like hard, the hardest because they're unpredictable and what they're gonna do. That's why a lot of times you'll see some big content creators, maybe me sometimes, uh, lose custom match or something to some lower ranks because they're really unpredictable. Now they're not good, but when there's a lot of them, like you, like for example, Jinxie was one one of the coppers, so it doesn't always go the best because sometimes they're just super unpredictable. Um, and like, um, so. For example, positioning. If you're if you're just like man, I'm in a one v five, right? Now you can position yourself. That's like a lot of times, like when you see people clutch up one v five. Sometimes it's just good positioning. But other times, let's say I'm in this corner and you have this wall down. There's a guy there. There's a guy that uh, there's a guy over here, uh, on the balcony over there. You have a guy in this rundown rappel, a guy there, and a guy there, and you're kind of just getting shot from all angles. You can't really do much. I mean, you could crouch, kill this guy, stand up, kill this guy. Then you could uh, try to feed the angle and try to get the guy over here and then this guy and then hope probably by then this guy be either he's still in the window or he hops in. But a lot of times it's just super hard to get out of situations like when you're getting ganked. So th th that's not really what this is for. I'm just going to run you through a couple scenarios. So let's say this, this, uh, this is down. Right, let's say this is down. Okay. And this is broken. And you're right here, and you're, you, you place yourself in a 1v3, okay? Um, let's say this is broken. So, you hear them break this, because you're, like, in this area right here. And you know there's a guy in this window, and you know there's a guy planting. Um, a lot of times, people get scared because of the plant. There are some scenarios, like in a 1v2, for, let, let's say this is a 1v2 scenario, okay? Uh, let's say this is a 1v2 scenario. Sometimes you might want to let the person plant. Like, a, let's say it's this guy right here and this guy in the window, okay? A lot of people, they want to just try to throw their body to kill the guy planting, and you're like, oh, 
man, I, I killed the planter, but then they can just end up killing you. Let's say the last one alive, they won the round. And you didn't really prevent much because they're going to end up being the bomb. Because if you're the only one in here and you're like the last resort, probably, and you're, and you're like, oh man, I have to throw my body for the plant to save the game, it's probably not going to work. So what I mean by let them plant is let them plant. I don't mean just sit here and let the guy literally plant. But if you know there's a guy in this window and there's a guy here planting, unless you have a C4 to throw over, which probably wouldn't hit him that best, I mean, I guess you could arch it or back up. Um, but if you're like right here, I don't think the C4 is going to exactly land where you want to unless you try to throw it right there. Maybe stick it to the wall so it hits on a little. The best thing you want to do is just let the guy plant. You want to use that time that he's planting to your advantage because this... Because what that means is, if there's a guy here planting, and they know what they're doing, there's going to be a guy out this window somewhere. He might be crouched, he might be over here, he might be standing, he might be crouched. Hell, he might even be farther back, somewhere back here, holding this angle. Like, if you guys don't know about this, this is a good, it's almost like, some of these are like smaller pixel peaks, and you can hold things for like people up there. But you have to be careful, because they can also look at this window and shoot you. So, what you need to do is, while he's planting in that about 7 seconds it takes him to plant, you want to try to win your ones with the guy out here. So if you kill the guy out here and you win your ones, before the plant's done, either it's going to be done, or it's going to just about be done, you can try to get the guy over here planting, or you might be able to catch him while, he's, cause, uh, while he turned his back running away. Because uh, if his guy just dies and he finishes the plant, he has two things. He can sit here, or... He can try to move out the way, but if he tries to run down this hallway, you're going to find him. So a lot of times what people do is they plant right here, and they hop out. They hop down right here. So that you can either try to bait it and get him up here again, or you can try to uh, get him on his back this time and get him off the thing. And what I'm going to say is, if you're in this scenario and you see the guy hop, and it's like the first few seconds of the plant, what you might want to do is chase him because he's going to be down here in his back of his turn and he's going to come, he's either going to come up these stairs, but if you know for a fact that he's going to try to make his way over there, he has to go over to the bus, so it's going to take him longer. So you actually have enough time to defuse, so the smartest thing for that guy to do would be to come up these stairs. So if you're defusing right here, you can go up the stairs and kill you. Another thing you can do is... Uh, let's say the diffuser is right here. You can walk towards the diffuser, and when, you, and when you see it, you can back up, and you can hold it. And you back up as you hold whatever your diffuse button is for, like, PS4 it's square. You can back up, and you can hold it. And see, now I'm diffusing it. He's down there coming up the stairs. So not only, uh, let's say he hops, right? And then I go in here. Zhoom, zhoom, like, I start diffusing it. Now he has to run up here. He's holding here, he's gonna shoot, he's gonna try to get you off of it, but if you know that he can't see you, he's gonna try to get you off of it and it's not going to work. So that, so he's gonna come over here, and he's still not gonna be able to see you, he has to come over here and this is when he'd be able to see you. So for example, it takes, uh, so like watch the time for me to get over there. So, we're gonna start at 55. See? It, take, it takes a while for him to get over here, and if you sometimes even if you get it before he hops, sometimes he might, uh, sometimes they might full sprint more. But now when you know for a fact that he's full sprinting, and you think in your head he might get you, that's when you want to let go and shoot him. But another thing is what I see people do a lot is they'll let go and then try to redo it. If once the um diffuse time gets to about around a quarter. Like maybe like one or two ticks below the quarter of the diffuse bar, you have to stick it. If you let go, you don't have enough time. Uh, but if it's before that, like let's say you still have half the time left, and you may, then you can let go and swim him. Because now he's exposed himself and he's not going to hop down again. Because if he does, you're already here and you can shoot him easily. Um, another thing that's going to help with positioning is I see people do this a lot. Let's say you're attacking, right? You make your way in here. And let's say this is clear, okay? Because you have your teammates outside breach, but there's a guy right here, right? What I see a lot of time people try to do is these, these swings, these don't always work out a lot. These, they're really high key, they can see your gun, it's loud, they'll hear you. When you swing, it, sometimes it's best to do wider swings. Like, it's not always going to work. You, sometimes you might die. You know, sometimes you might get Rico headshots, it happens all the time, it gets frustrating. 
But there's different types of swings. Like you can like do straight out, and you can go on an angle. Maybe there's a guy you can do close ones. But um, a lot of times, I see. I'm not saying don't ever do these, but I always see uh, players in the lower ranks fumble the lower swings because a lot of times they mess it up. Like they'll be aimed like right here. They might be aiming too far the other way. They might be aiming too far over here. Maybe they might do it slow. And another time is, another thing that I want to do is don't slow peek stuff. Like, you you can if you're slow slow walking to something and slow peeking is different. What I see a lot of times is players, like, uh, will just slow, slow walk like this. And especially if you're running a gun like an LMG, they're going to see it and they're going to pre-fire you. It's not going to work. I mean, it works sometimes if you're, like, uh, slow walking. Like, let's say there's a guy planting and you're slow walking like this. That's different. Because you're trying to be as quiet as you possibly can so he doesn't know what's happening. And you're trying to sneak your way up there. And I'm going to give you... Okay, back to my other scenario. So, um, let's say there's a guy here and a guy here. Uh, or, let's say there's a guy here, a guy planting, a guy at that window. Let's go back to that original um, um, scenario. What's going to happen is this guy, let's say he's already in here. Okay. So it's the same scenario as before. You gotta win your ones with this guy, but now you're time cramped. So, um, your, your best bet this guy's not going to hop out the window. You can see bomb. This guy's planting. They're gonna hold. So, this guy, uh, a lot of times people have roles. Like, when you're playing, like, in the scenario, let's say you're this guy and you're not that guy, okay? Uh, you don't want to peek, okay? But a lot of times the low ranks are going to. But like, let's hypothetically, let's say they're peeking it, okay? Um, this guy, he's gonna be the most aggressive because he's behind you, okay? He can't see bomb, he can't really stop much, so he has to come up on you. So you need to get this guy, sometimes it's gonna be shield up. A lot of times it is the shield up, unless they're doing the ones planting. Um, like a lot of times this is where this one you'll find out it's like one of your like sword pushers like an ash Maybe someone goes Finca by themselves, you know a blitz some character that runs off by themselves an Ayana Something like that. They'll be behind doing some sort of like goofy business back here And you're gonna want to kill them because they're just gonna be probably be full sprinting a lot of times They're really aggressive. They're like oh man. It's a 1v3 my teammates are gonna hold So you need to try to get this guy out as soon as possible in the safest way like using your quick peaks, head angle, stuff like that. Then you're going to want to, like I said, you're going to want to get this guy. After you get that guy, it's going to be pretty much the exact same scenario that we've been over. And another thing is positioning. So let's say you have a teammate sitting right here. You don't want to go sit in this corner. Like sitting in corners isn't always helpful. Like, yeah, you need to be behind something, but sitting, like, sitting site and holding site are two different things. Holding site would be like when you got some Cuba barriers up, like um, a lot of times, like reinforcing some of this, stalling out, because when you're in sight, you just don't want them to plant, you're trying to stall out, right? If it's a 1v1, just act like you're super aggressive, maybe get him to not plant, because if I waste time and he gets down to the last five seconds, I'm just going to sit here, okay, because it takes seven seconds to plant, so either he's going to start planting and faking and come at me, pause. Or he's going to have to hold it and I get to swing him for a free kill. Um, like, you don't need, like, when you're defending, you don't need kills. Unless it's like they already planted. You have to sit tight, they have to go to you. Like, I don't care, like, let's say this is my this is my room on the side. A lot of times, a lot of times on this map, you'll have somebody playing either in office, sometimes over here around Africa. They might be, uh, you'll have someone over here. And then you probably have somebody in this room, maybe. Uh, probably like the Azami, because that's what keep us up. Maybe they might be over here. And then your fifth guy might be roaming, or he might be helping on Breach or whatever. Maybe, maybe playing below as like a Solus or Pulse. And yeah. So anyway, you want to be spread out. A lot of times, uh, when you hear noise, let's say there's a guy here. Let's say I have a teammate here, here, a roamer downstairs, and here. Here. and my job is right here let's say it gets down to about a minute 40 right this guy's dead let's say it's just me and these two over here right and the roamer and this guy's dead and you hear some shots over there and it's a 3v2 let's say that 
And you don't want to be that guy to come over here and try to thirst the kill. Okay? You don't, you don't need to thirst the kill. Just sit there. Because a lot of times, like, throwing bodies, I see a lot of low ranks who will, like, oh, can I stream? I play with emeralds, diamonds, champs, coppers, bronzes, silvers, golds, plats. I play with everybody. Pretty much whoever wants to run up in the stream. And a lot of times, um, the lower rank people will have bad KDs because they throw bodies. Okay, just sit there. You don't need to over, um, do anything. Like, if you're over here and you're chilling, just... Just you're fine. Just sit there. You don't need. You don't always need to kill. Okay. Sometimes, uh, think same thing with roaming. Sometimes there's good picks. Sometimes there's bad uh, picks. You know, you don't need to extend your body too much because at the end of the day, you need to be there. Like sometimes your presence, just being here, could slow them down because then they might have to use some of the drones, utilities, flashes, and it might take them 45 seconds, maybe a minute to get you, and then they use all the stuff and they don't have anything to use in, on their four teammates. Because another thing is, if you leave. And you go over here to thirst to kill. You don't know where that other guy is. Maybe he's over here. Maybe he's right here and you're walking by and you get shot. Maybe he comes up behind and he shoots all you guys. That's happened. All these scenarios, that's happened to me. Not to me, but I've either spectated it and it happened to somebody else. Or um, I would be one of the guys over here fighting and my teammate comes over and I die. Okay. Everybody has been in some sort of scenario like that. So another thing for positioning, just don't stack on your teammates. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be your best call. But um, for the most part, sitting in corners, like I said earlier, sitting in corners like this isn't going to help very much. Okay, It, it can help, but it's not always going to be the best. Like, like this is just sitting site. People are just in the corner like this. This isn't helpful. Try to find some sort of angle or something to actually hold so you're doing something. Because, like, if I'm sitting here, no one's scared to swing me, right? It's a bad angle. They can swing from here, here, here. But if I'm, like, over here, for example, I'm holding this door. Maybe you're crouched doing it. You know, maybe move out slightly. Trying to hold a smaller gap. What people don't know is this stuff like this isn't bad. They can, you can only see a little bit of their head, but they can see after body. So, maybe you're holding, let's say you're holding this, right? Now, uh, if this is clear, then you can clear this, this. Maybe you might have a mirror head holes there, this, and then there. Um, I don't know. Another thing is, I don't know why, unless you have, like, some sort of, like, strap, maybe some of the zombies, I wouldn't sit up here. It gets pre ferried a lot. And, like, higher ranks, and, like, when I was in lower ranks trying to rank up, I'll, this was a very common spot for people to sit, but as you get in higher ranks, people would just literally come out of the window, and they'll come right here, and you literally just have to sit here and make fire, and it's a free kill. So, yeah. You need to know what operators to play and what your gadget does. Okay, it's very important to know what your gadget does. So, for example, well, my has these, right? He has these. Um, for the most part, uh, I see people throw them everywhere, okay? So, what this does is it sucks projectiles like grenades, pretty much any throwable out of the way. So, uh, let's say you're throwing, let's say, um, let's say there's a frost mat or like maybe a yay over here. You don't want to throw it on the floor because if someone throws a grenade, it, you suck it towards this and it breaks it. Um, the best thing to do is try to put it as high as it can. Like, you can go right here and it's still going to cover the window. So, if they go through and it's up here, so it's not going to destroy the stuff down there. Another thing is, uh, he has this pistol for a reason. So, you can throw, uh, especially with this new stuff, you can throw it down here and stuff like this like especially with proxies what people don't know if your character has a shotgun if your character has a shotgun or something like if, all right, if I throw it it's gonna get sucked in here see it's out of the way something let's say they have let's say they have like a thorn or something up there just throw them out the way uh, you can also throw things like thorns um, you can throw things like thorns you can throw things like um, these. You can throw proximity alarms in here, and if they walk over, it beeps. Another thing that people don't know is like Malusi's. If I break the floor, let's say I break the floor like right here, because this is going to be the room below. So right there, it's going to be. See, look, this is the soft side. 
is gonna be like right around here. So sometimes you can hop up on desks and you can place them in Lucy's. Or a lot of times you can just like straight up place them on this wall. If that floor is broke, if they walk over it, they'll still get hit by it. Now, just because it, since it's just that little hole, it's not as much, but they won't be able to break it. And that's kind of, I mean, they can break it, but they're gonna have to be sitting like this. And they'll be exposing yourself the over here. So they're not going to break it unless they have some guy go below and break it. Um, another thing is, please don't do rumors. Like, another thing is, if you guys, uh, what helped me, I was in bronze for several seasons. Um, this was, like, years ago. But, um, what you want to do is, a lot of people want to play frag me ops, and I know it's fun, but play support. Um, that's not nothing. It can be boring, but it's going to help you with some aspects of the game. You know, characters like Thunderbird, Valkyrie, um, Rook, Doc, Legion, things like that, like Legion. Not only is he a trap character and he does damage, but he can also be used for intel because you'll hear it go off. So he can, um, so sometimes, let's say you're holding something by yourself, okay? Let's say I'm holding this and I want to hold this. I could have like a legion line over here and like right here. Now that they're going to walk into it and I'm going to hear it, or they're going to shoot it and I'm going to know where they're at. And that can also be very helpful. And really, your character that you're using depends on like what strategy you do. If you don't know, it'll be like, hey guys, what character do you want me to run? Blah blah blah. Because if you don't really, if you're solo killing or something, maybe uh, you run into people who shoot killing, do killing, maybe have a strat to try to work with them. Maybe you might disagree with the strat, but as long as you guys, a lot of times people fail because they're all trying to do different strategies versus trying to um, uh, work as a team. Because this is a team game, okay? Um, there's been times where I've gotten four kills and I lost because one guy aces our team. Uh, it doesn't matter how many kills you get, because you can still lose the round. I've noticed some people who have aced and they still lost. And you just need to work together as a team. Um, knowing what operator you pick, it's going to be really depending on the site. Like, uh,. uh like, you can bring just about any operator to any site, almost. It just depends on what strategy you're doing. Now, there are some operators that I don't really like. There's some operators that... I feel like there's a couple operators that everybody just doesn't like and think isn't a good operator that shouldn't need to be named. I think we all kind of know what they are. But, um... Really, just about any operator is good. But if you're low... Like, if you don't at least have a positive KD, or even KD, I would try to play support ops, because that just helps out your team. Because, like, the difference of, like, if I throw a bell cam or something and I die, I can sit on that cam and I can ping, so even if I'm dead, I'm still playing and I'm actively helping my team. So it can be very useful.